Welcome back everybody to another great stage in our tournament. A lot has changed in the bracket and we have rearranged it. We had four SOC factions remaining in the tournament so we've broken them down into their own area. <coughs> and we have eight remaining factions in Westeros. I wrote an Andal because it's easier to fit in and most of them are Andals. Much easier to do. Um, so we've rearranged it so we'll have the Targaryens led by Aegon facing off against the Tullys. We'll have the Free Folk against Stannis Baratheon. The Dornish against uh, blah, 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 House Greyjoy. And House Lannister versus House Baratheon. Ah, uh, it will be a sight to behold. Let's get right into it. We're going to start off with Lannisters versus Baratheons. Let's go. Alright, everybody, welcome to the field. We have the great Lannister army of Casterly Rock Elite Pikes ready to defend their home of the rock from the invading forces of House Baratheon who have learned of the treachery of Tywin and Cersei and how their father, the great father of House Baratheon, Robert, was slain not by a boar but by an evil plot. A plot to get him drunk. Not a difficult plot to accomplish with Robert, but it's what they did. So the Baratheon army, the great house guards with their lovely hammers in honor of Robert stand their ground awaiting the enemy forces. Trying to get into a nice high ground position, although they appear to be botting out a little bit. They might be retreating right up to the top. I didn't actually change the leader around, so we've got a random random dude leading this army. Whereas on the on the Lannister side, they are led by Tywin. Wherever Tywin is right now. These boys with their hammers all out, ready to smash some skulls. Whoa! Big damage. Alright, the Lannister army is closing in. A couple of Lannisters getting taken down immediately there. Looks like the vanguard forces of the Baratheons are pulling back up the hill. Single file, making it very difficult for them to retreat. They are going for a very hit and run style tactic here. Gonna try and hold the high ground by the looks of it. While the Lannister warriors chase them up the hill. The main battle will break out atop this hill as more Lannister forces pour in, chasing their enemy. The Baratheons looking to not want to stand their ground here, trying to retreat back, somewhat giving up the high ground to House Lannister. And now it becomes a slog fest. Lannisters are sending a flanking force to engage the leftmost flank of the Baratheons while their center line pushes down the hill. Oh, Jesus, that man just got absolutely slaughtered. All right. Having a quick look over here, and the Baratheons are just running around at this point. They're trying to not get locked down in, into a single spot. Constantly moving around, making it very hard for the Lannisters to actually form a line and fight them properly. Generally not how I would use shock infantry, being a Baratheon man, I would just throw them in. It looks like they are getting starting to get hacked apart though as they're trying to back off. But the enemy, the Lannister Lions have caught them here and given themselves time to reform and now the clash commences. Both armies fully committed and the shock infantry goes in, doing insane casual, causing insane casualties to the Lannisters and breaking their infantry almost immediately with their counter charge. Damn, those hammers are insane. Jesus, all right, boys. The house of the lion has been beaten. Let us move on to the next round of this battle. All right, men, welcome to the archery round, where a thousand Lannister longbows will face off against a thousand mastered archers of the house Baratheon. 
Whoever wins this will have a massive advantage going into the cavalry round, and this is always the derpiest round to watch, so I'm keen to get into it. So we've got a very tight formation formed up by the warriors of House Baratheon. The Lannister Longbows spreading out more. Still very clustered for an archer regiment, but I suppose you get a thousand archers on the field running in a direction, it's going to happen. Much more spread out though, you've got a very tight formation as they advance for the Baratheons. The archers should begin to open up. We've got the Baratheon archers opening fire. The Lannister men trying to spread out and form up. Really all they should be doing here is firing back. They're going to take a lot of free casualties. A lot of them just being gunned down. Shot to pieces by the enemy's archers. They need to return fire. Instead, they appear to have opted into melee. Don't know if they win that. Having said that, it is only, only the center that's opted in for melee. The men on the flanks are firing. One Stormland warrior nobly charging through the enemy ranks, trying to cause some damage. He is definitely causing damage. And, oh, it took five men to kill him. All right, looks like the enemy have opened up into straight melee. And the forces of House Baratheon are just chewing through the lighter armored warriors that the Lannisters field. Dear Lord, it's a bloodbath. <laughs> this flank is doing pretty well for themselves, but... <clears throat> Unfortunately, this flank is all that remains of this army. A measly, I'm going to say like 100 maybe, yeah, 106 men remain for the Lannisters against 600 remaining archers for House Baratheon. And there they go, they've broken. That's two wins to House Baratheon. Let's see how the cavalry round goes, boys. All right, men, welcome to the cavalry round. We have 500 Banner Knights of the Westerlands, their elite noble unit, against the great Storm Knights of the Stormlands, riding in, lances ready to charge down the Lannister cavalry. And we shall see the great slaughter in the center. As a bit of a wedge formation formed up there, as many soldiers are starting to meet on the outskirts of the battle and they are blobbing in and just getting into it. Let's get in for a closer look. Men swinging swords and spears, clattering against the arms of veteran warriors. Ooh, that was a bit framey. Get a look at this front line here. Many men being absolutely carved up. The two-handed swords of the Storm Knights, I feel, are giving them a massive advantage in this battle. Just being able to hack their way through the Lannister line. The one-handed blades of the Lannisters not quite holding up. I think we might see the Lannisters lose in this in this round. Oh my lord. Will the Lannisters be the, be the ones to compete? Or will they be defeated in the epic onslaught? Oh my lord, it looks like it look, that could be a break. I think they've broken them. The Lannister morale just did not hold true. And that's a victory for the Stormland Knights. But cheer, my brothers, for you have avenged Robert of the House Baratheon. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up our first quarterfinals match. Uh, with the Baratheons winning over the Lannisters. I hope to see you in the next one, guys, where we'll have the great armies of Dawn, the Krakens of... of... Look, the Krakens of the Iron Islands facing off against the great Vipers of Dawn. Stay tuned, subscribe if you're new here. Bye for now, not forever.